so the next project is installing our Noico sound deadener in a heat resistant mat. So it's similar to Dynamat, but the reason I went with Noico is they offer an all black with no logos on it because what I want to do is go all the way up the firewall. So you're going to see some of where the mat is. So I want it to be just all black so you don't notice it. A lot of the mat is the aluminum color, the silver, and you can see that if it goes past your carpet, you can see that. Um, so I don't want that. I'm going to try to go as far up as I can because the all the factory um, heat resistant stuff has been removed. It's bare metal up front and it's just ready for the Noico sound deadener. I'm gonna put that all over the front firewall, all on the floor here, and then if I have enough, I'm gonna do the whole back section. So first we've got to take off these seals, we've got to take out the carpet, blow it out, clean it up a little bit, and then start laying down the sound deadener mat. all the carpet out now everything would be perfect if it wasn't for there's a little padding under the carpet that they uh, decided to self adhese on there so I've got to get that stuff off of there but no problem I mean this looks good I've seen them way worse than this so we'll blow this out with some air we'll get that kind of uh, felt stuff out of there. I'm still debating if I want to cut those little brackets for the gas tank off and they don't really get in the way but whenever you put the carpet there you've got to cut out like a slit and it just doesn't look good there. It doesn't look finished so I'm probably just going to cut those out and uh, that way I can lay everything flat get it all sound deadened I'm gonna take out these kick panel speakers as well. They had some wires run into it, but I just want, want to run new wires to all the speaker stuff. I'm gonna leave a couple of the wires that you see. This wire right here, that's to the compressor relay and the fuel pump. So I'm gonna leave that there for now. Um, and then this wire that you see right here, those go to, I have exhaust, cutouts on this so I can hit a switch and it opens up the exhaust. So I'm going to leave those. There's a lot of wires and I have them ran underneath the truck. So I'm just going to leave those and as I put the sound deadener on there, I'll just move them out of the way. Um, it'll save me a little bit of time later on and they're not really in the way I can move them. And Last time I tried to cover every square inch while doing the sound deadener and what I found out is you can use large sections and get the same effect. I'm still going to try to cover as much area as I can but whenever it comes to these side pieces I'm not going to try to cover every square inch. I'll probably just come kind of to the edge right here that way I'm not running into issues whenever I screw my door seals back in and I'll just try to do the best that I can but you don't have to get all this stuff perfectly covered everywhere. It's gonna have the same effect if you just cover small areas with big patches. So I'm gonna just install this stuff around the seat belts. I'm not gonna unbolt every single little thing. Um, that's something I did with the last truck is I unbolted everything and I covered it all in the matting and then I, it was a struggle to find out where all the holes to bolt everything back in was. And what I've read is you don't have to have every square inch of these floors covered to get the same effect. So I'm going to cover as much area as I can, but I'm going to go around the seat belts, around the wiring, and around any of the areas that I feel like things are going to bolt into. That way I don't lose the screw holes. One good thing is if you are going to try to get every square inch of everything, whenever you get to the holes there, as you put that sheet, push your finger in and go ahead and cut those out 
with a razor knife and leave the hole there as you do it. Don't cover the whole thing like I did and then go back and try to find all your screw holes and where everything bolts up because that was a pain. So as you put each little section, go ahead and cut out your holes. That way, whenever you're done laying it all out, you've already got your holes cut and you're ready to bolt everything back up. So next, I'm just gonna try to get some of that felt stuff off and then blow it out with an air hose to get some of the sunflower seeds over here and just some of the uh, nastiness out of here. And then I'll start laying it down. Some people try to spray the whole thing with um, a primer or something like that. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, the floor is pretty clean on here. It's not rusty or anything like that. And this is clean enough for that stuff to stick. And what I don't wanna happen is a bunch of overspray get all over the nice interior of this. And I don't wanna take the time to try to roll on a lizard skin or something like that. Although lizard skin is something I'd like to try in the future. It looks really awesome. But um, on this one, I'm gonna use the Noiko. Already had a box of it laying around. Where this isn't painted, I'm probably gonna try to do the sound deadener all the way up to the back wall there. And eventually maybe mount some speakers or something back there, we'll see. Okay, I've blown out all the trash. I've gotten rid of the little felt stuff that was left over. I actually just took a torch, just a little torch and heated it up and it melted and I scraped it right off, super easy. Went ahead and cut the, where the gas tank mounts up. I just cut it off flush and then I used the hammer and hammered it down even with this. And I'm gonna coat all that with the sound deadener. That way the carpet will lay flush over that and not have to cut a slit in the carpet and have this weird piece of metal sticking out. So, And that may help us whenever I go to put that Snowden seat in. It may help me slide it further back away from the steering wheel. We'll see when it gets to there. But yeah, we'll start installing the sound deadener. Okay, so here's the stuff that I'm gonna be using for this sound deadener installation. We've got the Noiko. This is the 80 mil, 36 square foot box. I've got a link of, for this in the description. And the reason I chose this, they're all about the same, but Dynamat being crazy expensive. But the reason I chose this one is this one is all black. The Noiko comes with the all black 80 mil. So as we put this in, it's gonna be hard to see. If you go above the carpet or anywhere that's not covered, this is gonna look just like your regular steel firewall. And this comes in big sections, which I like as well. Noiko roller. And don't go cheap with the roller. I've used the plastic ones. They just aren't as good. This metal Noiko one with the wooden handle, these are heavy duty because what we'll want to do is we'll stick this down where we want it and then we have to come back in with this and we'll push down on the sound deadener and you'll see there's little triangles or little diamond patterns in this. I mean, when we push this down, those diamond patterns will go out and that's how we know that we've installed it correctly. So the link for both of these things are in the description. You also just need a... A blade to cut with and sometimes there's crevices that are hard to get into with this but you can use the back side of this for curves or any kind of wood or anything that you have that has the contour of the place that you're trying to install it but this is really heavy duty I like this Noiko stuff I've used it twice it's really good the kill mats great I've never used Dynamat but they're all just 80 mil a lot of them and then this 36 foot box, I think was about $60 and then $10 for the roller. Um, so we're gonna start from the passenger side here on the lip. And something about this Noiko, it comes in these big sections here. So don't feel like you have to use the whole section. 
if it's easier for you to cut it into smaller pieces to do the contours that you're doing, then by all means do that. So I'm gonna start off with one big piece and I'm gonna go all the way up the firewall as far as I can and start there and then go down and work towards the back of the cab. So what I like to do is before I start sticking this on, before I pull that adhesive backing off, I like to just get down there and put the piece where I think it needs to go and see what needs uh, to be trimmed or what it's gonna hit. So if I push that all the way up to the firewall, I can see my, uh, my little tube that comes out of the vintage air, it needs trim there. And then this little wiring that comes out of the firewall needs trim. So what I'm gonna do is you can push on the sound deadener with your fingernail to make a mark. And if you can see where I pushed with my fingernail right here and right here, that is where I'm going to need to cut to go around something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my razor blade and I'm just going to cut like that down to where I need to go. Just like that right there. And as I slide it back up there, I'm going to use this and I'm going to slide it around it. And then I'm just going to, this is a little bit flexible. You can put like a little cut in it to go around the area that you want and then just cut off the excess whenever you're there. So for instance, if this is the, if this is the wire that's sticking out, I would slide it up in there and I would form it around it. And then I would just trim with my razor a little bit. So it lays flat. This stuff has a little bit of flexibility to it. So you don't have to get a perfect cut. It can kind of be trimmed or smushed into the area that it needs to go. So now what I do is I'll pull out part of the adhesive backing, not the whole sheet yet, but just like the front piece, just like that. And I'll go ahead and, and mount that where I think it needs to go. On these side pieces, what I'm looking for is this crease here to be exactly where I need it on the side, because this doesn't matter if it's square, but on the right side, I want that square all the way back. So when it gets to these round spots, like around the tranny tunnel, this is where I like to just cut these in smaller sections. If you've ever bought kill mat before, they come in like foot sections to, to form the way that you want. But with the big section, you can use one big section if you can, or you can just cut these into smaller sections and form them the way that you want. And remember, the first time I did this, I tried to get everything so perfect and the lines and I still like to do that. But what I found out is it's just easier 
if you just try to get it all covered and try to make it look okay, but not get so detail oriented because as soon as it's on, you're putting carpet on top of it and nobody will ever see it again. So the main point is the function of getting it all covered, not spending a lot of your time trying to get everything perfect for a picture, even though I love it to be perfect. Don't get me wrong. I love it when there's lines, but it just doesn't work out that way. And before you know it, you've spent a whole weekend just trying to put some sound deadener in your truck when you could have it knocked out in an hour or two. So I got over here to this area. I just cut out a little notch where the high beam, low beam goes in. As you can see in all these little crevices, sorry about the shadow, I use the end of the roller to push down into those. And that's just kind of how it looks. I cut that in a smaller piece so I could get the bend of the floor and I'll continue to move it over. Not much to this. On the corner cuts are a little bit difficult. If you feel like it's not folding over, just make a slight cut right in the corner of where it needs to bend. Then stick it all down and let it overlap over each other. Took me a couple tries to figure out how to make it lay down the best, but once you get it going, it's, it's not too bad.
Okay, so we have all the front of the cab, not the back yet, but all that all the way up the firewall as far as I can go. Looks good, it all laid down. Got about an hour of work into this and messing around trying to record and everything. So like I said, you can try to get all the creases and everything perfect, but if you're looking at it right now, it's hard to tell exactly where I stopped and where I started. You can see a couple little pieces, but hey, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once it's all laid down, it looks good and it's gonna uh, suit its purpose, right? So it's gonna keep down on some of the noise. It's a heat barrier as well. So when I put this down, especially with a low rider airbag truck, you know, you get all those gravel sounds and all the kind of road noise if you don't have this stuff. So riding so close to the ground, just simply putting a coat of this underneath your carpet is gonna cut down a lot of the noise. I have vintage AC on this, so this is also gonna help with any of the air leaking out um, any of that kind of stuff is going to help hold the temperature inside the cab as well. So yeah, this is also going to help the audio system when I get it all installed. So it's going to help out with a number of different things. So again, this is about a, under a hundred bucks. You can get as much as you need to do your whole floor. Uh, I think I'll have enough to do the side pillars right here, but I don't think I'm going to have enough to do the back. So if you're wondering how much you need to order, I ordered 36 square feet. I've got a couple more pieces of the big pieces left. I might be able to get this small section right here, but I'm trying to debate on whether I want to get the kick panels first, which I think I will because I want to go ahead and install those kick panels back there. And then whenever I get another box, I'll do from there all the way up the back of the cab. So for the kick panels, I got the idea. This piece is almost the right height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace out the edges here and then I'm gonna cut it out. Remember vintage air, I'm not gonna have this flap. This flap is capped off when you have vintage air. So I'm just gonna do this dynamat over the whole section. So I'm gonna draw a line here and then I'm gonna cut a little bit inside of the line so I don't make it too big. So I think I've collected enough pieces to go ahead and cover this back section, just the bottom part here. Uh, it's going to be hard to get all these bolts, so I'm just going to lay it and I'm going to kind of show you the process that I use to get contours and things like that. Again, this is, doesn't have to be perfect. The carpet is going to hide this. I just want to get everything covered and soundproofed. And then I'm going to order one more small box to do the whole back of the cab um, at a later time. So if I cover this, I can go ahead and get my carpet back in. I want to run some speaker lines underneath the carpet to go to where my radio is going to go.
We've got all the Noiko sound deadener done. And we're gonna put the carpet back in there. I'm gonna run some wires for the speakers. And then I'll put the kick panels back in. And then next we'll be installing our Bluetooth radio. You can sit down right there. You can help Daddy. Okay. Okay. And you look. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I sit down. down. You look and your door and you look. Yeah. You can drive and and faster, faster. Yeah. Yes. You can faster sometimes. Yeah. Yes. That's fire. Yes. My turn. Now we fire burn you. You gotta be careful with fire. 